Welcome to the May 2020 edition of the EPM radio show. Congratulations on making it to another month of lockdown. We're going to dedicate this show to all the barbers and hairdressers out there. We need you to take care of all these mullets. This is a radio show presented by myself, Oliver Way. I say it's a radio show as there's no mixing. If you want a mix show, check out the EPM podcast once a month. It's the end of every month. This month is hosted by Ectomorph. This is a radio show where I'll be highlighting the latest releases over the last month, ranging from Electronica, IDM House, Techno, Electro. All the tracks I'm playing in the show are out now. They go stream or buy them. This month, we're playing some new music from people like Peaking Lights, Joe Louis Vega, Developer, Pastorella and Mark DeCantu, The Advent, and lots more. Also, later in the show, I have a conversation with Adam X talking about the Sonic Groove label and the fact that it's the 25th year they're celebrating this year. So stay tuned for all of that. Listen up, honestly, I can go wrong on my game, my poetry, profound too long, and I'm not saying you're just a thing, but I can help and every time you pop and ask me what you wanna do to me, another day, another sin, you're teasing me, you're the boss, my time is lost, just say to me, I need you too, to get me too, wish you on the food, now I got you wondering, what am I gonna do to you? Names Honestly out on IU Music. Next up, we have a track taken from the Tap Room Bottom Feeders new album. 
The track's called Sons of Experimentation and War. It's a bit more of the um, abstract experimental style track on there. Most of it's electro. Album's called Boanges and the Watery Deep. The Black Poo of the Detroit Grand Poo Bars, Luxus Vata, they cut the Tetherine Bottom Feeders, it's their debut album. Next up, we got a track taken from Beacon Light's new album. A great album, um, so diverse, so unusual. It's on Dick Mantle. I've gone for a track here called Go Dharma. It's so completely different from anything else I've heard. The album blends lo fi synth pop, I say kraut rock, dark atmospherics, and like Stranger, stranger Things TV show meets Craftwork, meets the Stone Roses, meets God knows what. The album's called Escape.
Moonlight. I said, check that album out. Escape. Really something different. So next up we got Rene Ribeiro and Demi Roussos. Track called Light Sound Duality. Kind of a fusion of like hip hop, electronica, jazz. into it. I was just blissed out there thinking I was on Ibiza. So following on for some layback vibes, going into uh, New York this time, Lil Louis Vega on the remix here for a track called Turn Me Out by jo Jovan, New York City, spawning some legendary house acts. Frankie Knuckles actually came from before he went over to Chicago. In case you weren't aware, Larry Levan was actually originally off the job in Chicago at the warehouse. Larry Levan turning it down, he was already a resident Paradise Garage. Anyway, like the version there. Um, another legend, as I said, Louis Louis Vega on remix queuing for Turn Me Out featuring yeah. Casio Wear.
little bit. Next we've got a track by Jack Master, Jasper James and Duqua. This is a track they put out and they're going to be donating 50% of any profit from this release to the emergency services. They're doing obviously an amazing job through this difficult time. I'll put the link uh, on that more info on that and who they're donating the money to into the description so you know. Track's called Situation and it's on Mitchell Street Records. featuring uh, Matt Warren and Ralphie Rosero. It's taken from a compilation that Jerome is putting out uh, called Kill Yourself Dancing, the story of Sunset Records, Chicago, 1985 to 1989. Here's Jerome to tell you a bit more about it. Hey, this is Jerome Deraji, founder and owner of Steel Music in Chicago. Kill Yourself Dancing is a compilation that we released to showcase the talents of Matt Warren and Miguel Garcia, aka Michelangelo the architects behind the classic Chicago label Sunset Records. 
I discovered Matt Warren and Sunset Records after buying one of his 12-inch, a Frankie Knuckles favorite, The Way to My Heart, in a thrift store here in Chicago. I then discovered more releases on the label and decided to find Matt Warren to work on a project with him. It took me a while to find Matt, and once I did, we started working on this compilation right away, as I wanted to tell the story of this fantastic and often forgotten Chicago original house label that was hugely influential in the Midwest. Matt, Miguel, and Rafi Rosario were kids when they produced the track Kill Yourself Dancing, with the first TR909 in the city. Farley Jackmaster Funk did the mix down, and Dan Rowade added the bass lines. This track was released in May 1985 on the Raz EP on Sunset Records, the f- their first release and it was a local hit, and the rest is house music history. Enjoy and take care. Great tune, classic, never gets boring, still playing that out now. Thanks very much to Jerome for coming on and introducing that for us and telling us more about that release. This next one is by Andy Buchan, a nice cool disco house label. This has been released on called Citizens Advice. No, not Citizens Advice, <laughs> Citizens of Vice. Started out in 2018 with a release on Instagram Later on, something satisfied. Released on there is a producer who hosted a mix on our one of our EPM podcasts a couple of months ago, the Blistering House set. So make sure you check that out. 
to the track called Cosmic.
lifting and a disco. Cutting my stuff across the dance floor. Busting a move, Don Chivato style. You see me go. Anyway, head over to Nashville now. A place that's known for country music. But don't worry, I won't be veering off the musical path to play techno remixes of Dolly Parton or Cotton Eye Joe. It's an artist from Nashville called Body Copy. One's a label called Body Cuts. Heaven. This track. This track is called This Time. Bit of an old school garage flavour. into it at the house and then you leave man you throw on your headphones you hit that sony walk man bro and it was heaven Electro. 
First up on this uh, playlist I got is a track by one of the most underrated producers, John Selway. Put out a great EP back in uh, was the early 2000s under the name Memory Boy called There Is No Electricity. If you haven't heard that, go check it out. And uh, this one is on his own label, I believe it's his own label anyway, Serotonin Records. Which is called uh, Light Language.
I'm going to have to carry on. I have to get through these tracks, man. I've got so many good tunes I want to play you. Heading now down to Miami for some uh, electro breaks. One of my favourite producers in that style, in that genre of music. Someone who's been brought up on bass like so many others down there in Miami. Brought up on Dynamics too. Two live crew. This is uh, Exact on his own label, Monotone. It's uh, released on this track. It's called Positive Mental Amplitude. Next up, it's track off from the elusive label Code QR. All the uh, releases on this label are um, have the artist name kept secret. That you focus only on the music. They don't release the names for like I think two months after the release date itself. So people focus on the music rather than looking at the name. If you want to find out more about this label, check out Code3QR.com. 
because it doesn't matter on a name. If the track is good, the track is good. And play it loud!
track we got is on Soma's fairly recent subsidiary, electro subsidiary label called Avoidant Records. An artist I've not heard from in a while now, Kronos Device. Good to see you back, Spoonie. That's um, Bass Junkie and uh, Simon from uh, the Dexasis. It was in a band called Dead Silence Syndicate. Sure they're still around, but that was a great band worth checking out if you've never heard of them, Dead Silence Syndicate. Called Infinite One. Quite a funny story about one of the guys from Dead Silence Syndicate back in the day at Rock Weekender. 
Actually, that wasn't a block weekend. It was an event before block weekender. Deadbeat, where got accused of being a policeman. <laughs> Can you believe it? Label run by James Luskin. Oh, no, sorry, actually, Pick 24, Cultivated Electronics. But it is somebody who looks remarkably like James Luskin. And in fact, I think maybe they're doubling up on gigs. Probably be like Sync 24 in the Electro Room, and then about 30 minutes later, there's James Luskin in the Techno Room. Making the piss out of all of us. Anyway, this is the advent. So the track I picked off his album, this killer album that he's done for the label, Cultivated Electronics, called Live Cycles. This track here is called uh, Live at Motor. I picked this tune because this weekend would have been movement. And unfortunately, we're not there. But anyway, enjoy a track that was recorded by Cisco from the advent at Motor Detroit. I don't know when, but it's still a killer tune anyway. Wow. Live at Motor, in case any of you didn't know, that was a club in Detroit back in the early 2000s. Congratulations on making it this far. Here's a little catch up I had with Adam X from Sonic Groove Records during the week. We had a little chat about the label because it's their 25th anniversary. So he um, gave us a bit of history about the start of the label and some other info about more recent releases. So Adam's going to refer to Frankie, which is Frankie Bones, and Heather, which is Heather Hart. Obviously Frankie Bones from Bones Breaks back in the day, started out the record shop. Heather Hart used to run a uh, fanzine in New York called Under One Sky back in the early 1990s. Hey Adam, thanks for coming on to the EPM radio show to have a chat with me. What's up, man? So Sonic Groove first started as Groove Records in Brooklyn. What's the reason for moving from Brooklyn to Manhattan? And was the name change due to that move as well, from Groove to Sonic Groove? You know, Frankie opened the shop, right? I, I came in pretty soon after, maybe within two months I started working there. And then I wound up just kind of running the shop. By, by 93, 94, it was kind of solely on me. 
that I that I ran all the business and 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 everything there, even even the buying pretty much. Um, and then we the lease was up in the, in in the shop, and we just thought that it would be a good move to move into Manhattan, and right, mm-hmm. and then also Heather wanted to join in. And that we decided to, to add the Sonic to the group. We, we we wanted to take it to the next level, and we thought that that Groove was a little bit too generic of a name, which was also true. And that we wanted to call it Sonic Groove, and, and that's why it's 25 years because the label started in in '95, and the shop opened in '95, mm-hmm. and that was the, that was the new beginning. Did you do anything to celebrate the opening of the new record shop, Sonic Groove? No, but it was a wild opening, man. The opening was amazing. So what we did was that we didn't have any original stores. We didn't really have a back catalog because we mm. really didn't have the money to spend on, on, on back catalog. We were always buying new records. We weren't making enough money there. It was like we were on a budget. So now with Heather and me investing in the shop and, and now in Manhattan, we, we felt comfortable enough to, to just try to start this back catalog thing with the new records. And uh, a distributor was kind of going out of business in New York, this company called EDI, E-D-I-E. And we went and we got a discount on all this amazing back catalog. So when we were, when we were advertising for the opening, we said that we had this, you know, back catalog. And I don't know, in the shop, we had never, ever did that well on a day, even 10 years later. It was the busiest day I ever had in a record shop. We, we, we just killed it. We were, we were already like pretty much already broke even on the investment on the first day. And we stayed, we stayed open from, from like noon to like midnight. <laughs> Everybody came. It was incredible. It was, it was, it was insane. And we had, we had enough stock to fucking, to, 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 to maintain too. Plus wow. it was the mixtapes were really big back then, yeah. if you remember. Yeah. And, and, yeah. uh, so yeah, that was, that was the start. And you know, the shop did extremely well until 9-11 and 9-11 was the was the downfall and then the euro coming out in 2002 and the euro being way stronger than the dollar at in in, in months and then the records being having to sell for 10 from 10 dollars to 14 dollars high speed internet and this was a downfall from so from 9-11 to 2004 when we closed you know it was a struggle the struggle was real mm-hmm. When you decided to start the label, did you envision it to be more of a family affair with releases coming from just yourself, Abe Duquet, Frankie, Read Truth, or did you always know that you wanted to put other artists' music out on the label? And did you already have the idea that you were, were hoping to take it into a more of an industrial direction? I mean, back then, I mean, when, of course, when we first started, it was, it was, you know, putting out music from people that we knew for the most yeah. part stuff regardless if we knew the people well or not but i i think you know it's always we knew everybody for the most part so you know yeah. same now most of the people i work with now i i did some sort of connection with right so i don't it's very rare that i actually work with people i don't know it, it, there, there has to be something said to me in a certain tone way in an email to actually to get me to want to work with people i don't know i, I think there's one guy that that kind of broke through me that i just put his thing out broke order Mm-hmm. And I didn't know him, but I actually met him and he just fits perfectly. He just, he said the right thing in an email and, you know, and then you met, I met him and I was like, this guy is this exactly, this is the type of person I want to work with. Normally it's the same. I, I haven't really changed my, my, my modus operandi. <laughs> now the industrial thing, you know, that's the, the fact of what I do with EBM and industrial, I mean, this didn't really exist in techno back in the day. And I didn't know about right. EBM. You know, you knew that. When, when, when I was coming over to yeah. do the industrial gigs in, in the early 2000s, this was all new. This was all a new streak to me. But it's not to say that I didn't play industrial back in the day. I, I think like Mexican United remixes of Apex Twin hey. is more industrial and a big influence on industrial people, Apex Twin. And I was playing Apex Twin when nobody knew who the fuck he was, you know? I mean, Heather interviewed him for One the One Sky like in like early 1992 before he even blew up. So we were, you know, and if you listen to some of the older Unimobius records and Bunker stuff, I mean, you know, there's the, all that old IF stuff, like the early Ferenc mm-hmm. shit, even though it's kind of acidy. It's still fucking raw, industrialish, mm. fucking, you know, it's this, it, always play the dark, heavy shit, right? So I think that was on the label, you know, going back to the beginning when I did the first record. The, the Snap EP is like rhythmic noise. It's like a lecture with rhythmic yeah. noise. It's all yeah. distortion, you know? 
And then, and then the other one that's really heavy, one of my favorite records on the label is the Distorted Waves of Ohm record from, from 97. I've always put out this really heavy shit. Like even those first Polaris record that Neil did, holy shit, the Neil Enstrom yeah. Polaris one. That was the third record on Sonic Boom because the catalog number, the first one in mine is 9501 and then it's 9601. But I changed the, the numbering of the label from 9601 and it, then it works up. Every, the, the, the first two numbers in the catalog are always the year and then it's just the number after it of the release. So now we're up to... The next, the next Sonic Groove record would be 19, it would be 2092, right? Mm -hmm. I, I thought also, why put the year on the late record? That kind of dates the record, right? Yeah. Or to date the music, right? But I know when the record came out. Now I can know that that record was in 97, 98. And I don't know if most people pick up on that. You know, you got Discogs now to do that. But, uh, you know, I just kept it as that. So then, you know, fast forward, uh, you know, doing the label and then the 2000s came and I got into the, the EBM thing and you know that's when I put out the Sector record that was a record from the, one of the guys from Clock DBA which is this really famous mm -hmm. fucking e yeah. uh, not, not really EBM band but industrial band but there's a connection a big connection to the techno scene on that record and it's the fact that Robert Gordon the founder of Warp Records who did Forge Masters and the Unique 3 the theme mm -hmm. he, he produced one of the tracks on it so it's actually a, and it's a bass track oh, wow. from Breakbeats so he's on that record. It's the first track called it's, it's Sonic Groove. It's SGO zero one two seven. The A one cut called Interzone is with Robert Gordon and 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 and, and DJ Mink actually, who fucking wrote the fucking Can You Relate on Warp. I was still heading into industrial by having Dean Dennis from Clock PBA, who was the bass player when it was an acoustic band, and then did most of the bass programming in, for the electronic shit when they sort of do. DBA did some of the most futuristic electronic music in the late eighties, like. They they were ahead of the curve. If you listen to the Clock DBA like from mm -hmm. like eighty nine, ninety, ninety one. Holy shit, the fucking sounds are like next level. Like mm -hmm. they were way ahead of everybody. I mean, the releases you've put out, I would say you were ahead of the curve with the industrial EBM sound coming back because it seems to have hit a hit a revival. The only person that was doing it before me was fucking Terence Fixima. Terence doing That's it in ninety eight on Gigolo. I mean, first he did the records on Planet Rouge on his label. And then Gigolo signed one of them and licensed one of them. And also Heckman was playing with this shit. He was, he was doing that belt and mm -hmm. stuff. The thing was is that Thomas was just making these records, and, but they weren't, he'd go back and make an acid record and then he'd go back and do his straight mm -hmm. techno stuff. And then he'd make an electro record. So he wasn't really pushing it. That, that was the thing. Like I was the one that was pushing it by going into the, electric, the EBM scene and trying to fuse the people from that scene into this and crossing the parallel, which is what I named my parties in Berlin in, when I first moved here in 2007, where we would book Surgeon and then we would book Monolith and, and book different acts from different, these different scenes together. And no one was doing that. I'm definitely the first one to, 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 to yeah. innovate that with the parties. You know, now, now we have a real proper scene for that shit. You know, like it, there is a, a real an EBM techno scene. We have, we have like a bit of a crew here, like off number Vita Gab, but Philip Strobel who runs this label. This is a very big label. So I've, worked, I've done records for him. I did this Reese Fulber remixes. It's got like Tommy 47, it's got Headless Hoffman, it's got Face mm. Tower and the Traversable Wormhole remixes. We all, we're all connected. We all support each other. You know, like we, there's, um, there's all, there's a connection between everybody. You'll see each other at the same parties here. And we have mm. a following of people that are really into this shit. And, it, and it's, it's not just in Berlin, it's in, you know, we get, we all play in the same venues, you know, like Ancient Methods. There's a whole, there's a whole crew of us. So what are your plans coming up? I know you just missed your 25th anniversary compilation. Have you delayed the release date? I'm, I'm doing right now, what, I'm, I'm delaying the release. I, I, actually, the vinyl is already pressed. It's sitting in storage at ReadyMade. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to put it out when we have some semblance of uh, a party going on somewhere. Yeah. It's, it's, for me, it's club music. It's music to be played in a club. It's not, I don't want it to come out now. And then by the time everything subsides with this Corona shit, that people already forgot about it because they, they bought new music that week. So I want it to come mm -hmm. out when, when, you know, the, the, these tracks on here, they're fucking all banging bangers for clubs. It's all like peak time. And like, I made everybody give me tracks that, with their best shit. I was like, I a and all this thing really heavily with everybody. Don't give me no filler. No filler yeah. on this. So I don't want to put, it needs to come out when the time is right. So in yeah. the meantime, 
I was about to put another, I'm putting another thing out in, Jan, in um, June. Her name is Irene uh, Amnes, and she makes experimental stuff mostly, but she does some techno stuff. What I'm putting out an ambient album on vinyl from her, it's a fucking amazing. It's, she's like, it's just some of the best ambient music I've heard in a really long time. It's like not drone, it's droney, but it's got like actual music. It's got, got emotion to it. So like Robert Liner stuff on Apollo? Sort of yeah, song. yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it, it's a bit, it's a bit like very self-reflective. It's not like super dark, more mm. self-reflective listening. And I think it's just the right time to do it because it's like yeah. everybody's home, right? The music just fits for the moment. It's, it's, and you know, people are buying music right now still. And I think it's, you know, when I'm at home, I'm listening to a lot of ambient and chill out music. I mean, you know, you're not playing banging fucking club hits in the house all day, right? Yeah, true that. And have you got anything else coming up this year that you want to tell us about? I'm doing uh, uh, another release with an artist named Machino, who also is doing something with Trezor. He's a, a, a guy from L.A. who makes really fucking good EBM techno. And then I'm doing the Robert Lino album. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a soft experience. Yeah. Is that new stuff? Yes, yeah, new stuff. And I've, I've already heard all of it, and he's working on it for me. So he's finishing it super excited to have that and then and then you know i plan on doing we were going to do an orfix album at the end of the year and uh mm -hmm. um that's going to get delayed till february now they want to do it they want to push it up a bit and then and then my my girlfriend uh made on is doing an album that will come out this year i want that out when she's going to go do this spoil room thing at kitty and tbilisi so that cool. that i probably put out in september so on my own i'm just doing an admx 71 album for lies with all the old direct sharp shit and like all the acid stuff I made, not all of it, but the best acid shit I made in the early 90s. You said that was all stuff on direct drives. Like they, did that include the, uh, the X Crash stuff? Yeah, there's X Crash shit, but there's also some unreleased stuff that I did. There's a, a track I did with Jimmy and Thomas Heckman that's on there that was only on mm. a CD comp back in the 90s that no one knows. There's a track with me in Audio Sex that's really good that never came out that, that he sent me like a year ago. It's, it's a mix of all the stuff I did. They're actually these really good tracks I did with Heather on Communique on Woody's label. And yeah. nobody knows them because there's no names on them. Communicate number nine is two tracks for me and Heather on that. It's like a, it's like kind of an electro acid track. It's like three three oh threes. It's kind of melodic, and like the mm -hmm. track never, no one ever really knew that it was up. They don't know. Nobody knows this track. Like so. Sorry, Adam. I'm gonna have to cut you short there, man. I mean, I love talking to you. I could keep going on for hours. Yeah. Cool. Thanks so much for coming on and telling us about the label, the back, the history, and uh, some of the insights of what you got coming up. It's really good to hear the label's doing so well. Take care and speak soon. Salva. Now here's a track from Adam that's just been released on Sonic Groove titled Coercive Persuasion.
Make sure you keep your eye open for the 25th anniversary compilation of Sonic Groove when it does manage to finally get it out. As Adam said, it'll be packed full of non-fillers, <laughs> as he put it. Next up, Mark DeCantu. You might have known from some of his releases on labels like MOS Recordings and um, Creme Organization. The collaboration with Danny Passarella, also known as Passarella Death Squad. He's also collaborated with people like Perk on Perk Tracks in the past. This track is called This track is called Appearance and it's taken from The Future Has a Silver Lining 2.
move Leon like a Don Julio tequila. From one full textured track into another, this time LA based with label owner developer who's just put out his first album, Sangre Por Oro. I'm sorry, I'm sure I've slaughtered that pronunciation. Stands for Blood for Gold. Many different textures featured on this album, well worth checking out. I'm going to play you a track called Jackham Tool 20. Take it off the album. Enjoy. keep getting longer and longer I mean the first one was an hour the second one was like an hour 20 hours 30 and this one looks like it's going to be about two hours uh, sorry about that it's just um, I seem to enjoy it so much there's so much good music out there but we've made it to the last tune 
The last tune of the month comes from a brummy lad, Makaton. He's got his own label, Bodge Cones. This track, this track's on Boy Tax. EP's called Crime Wave. This track's called Free Language. Boom! the show 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you discovered some new music to go and check out. I'll be back again next month. I'll try and, I think I'm going to try and go for like the third Friday of every month. Take care. See you soon.